Hi, I'm David O'Halloran. I'm the Senior Curator at the La Trobe Regional Gallery. Today we're in the painting store and we're here to have a conversation with artist Neil Stratford. We have two of your works in the collection and um, you make little theatrical scenes or in, in kind of academic language, mise en scène. Yep. And there's a whole history of that kind of photography, uh, but some artists will actually make up a full scale set or, a, or if Crudson, a whole street, mm -hmm. but you actually work with figurines and little, and your, your world is very small but made to look large. Yep. You want to talk a little bit about how yeah. you came to do that? Dolls and action figures have always been a part of my life. Uh, as from being a very small boy, um, you know, my parents would go out and buy me a train set and I wasn't interested in the train or anything like that. I was only worried about the little figures and things yeah. like that. My, my father would buy me a, a, a model plane and you know, I was only worried about the pilot. Yeah. You know, that was the thing, I was drawn to the, the little figures. Growing up, I, um, I, I started to collect action figures, toys, um, dolls. I'm, like I said, I'm not too fussed if we call them dolls. Uh, and, and even at an early stage, I was, I was probably a very, um, my brother was about 13 years older than me, so you, know, you might as well say I was uh, an only child except for my brother that was away a lot. And um, I didn't have many friends, so I used to create these scenes, um, play with um, uh, the dolls, the action figures, um, in a way to have a relationship and, and um, where I could actually control the relationship and control what was happening and things like that. Yeah, I think the control aspect is, is kind of interesting because if you're working with action, action figures, mm. you, can, you can change the set, you can change mm. the shot readily, mm. uh, you don't need a large studio mm. either, you don't need to pay lots of rent, yeah. you can do it on Absolutely. in a small room. But the other part of it is that for the viewer, when you, the realisation that they're, that they're figurines is perhaps suggesting that it is possible to change mm. the world. That you can reassemble yep. the world uh, because a lot of your work it deals with quite deep issues. Mm. Yeah, look, honestly, every work that I do, every piece I do, is a self-portrait. Just like Goya um, created the caprichos, the caprices, it was his version of what was happening in the world. And there was these little um, characters that were in it that were representing maybe the government or the church or whatever, but he. Um, but he was using these as allegories. Um, and I do particularly the same thing. Every image I do is a self-portrait, um, no matter if there's, say, Superman in the image or, um, uh, or a ca character from popular culture. Um, I use these characters not as a literal representation of them, but, you know, um, Superman is a good example because of my age, my first uh, recognition of Superman was the 1950s George Reeves uh, version of Superman on TV. And he used to fight for truth, justice and the American way. Now, if I put Superman in the scene, I could be talking about America and the representation of truth, justice and the American way. While sometimes you can read my work literally, um, there is a lot of layers in there um, and hopefully I use that as a hook to people, for people to look in there and get interested within the scene and actually question what is happening. Yes. I mean, a lot of your work deals with quite classical mm. ongoing mm. art issues like death, yep. for example. Absolutely. You know, it's a subject that artists have worked mm. with for a time immemorial mm. yep. <laughs> and probably will continue to do. Um, so what, what's your relationship to death? The same as everyone else's? The same as everybody else's. <laughs> yeah. um, however, um, and I, I don't mind saying because I'm, I'm a, a bit of an advocate um, 
for mental illness as well. I'm a sufferer of depression mm -hmm. and sometimes my work comes from a very dark place. And to get out of that dark place, I use my art to investigate it. And this particular piece, um, I think I was um, around this time of 2012. Uh, I lost my mother, I lost my brother um, at that particular time. So I was dealing with a amount of grief and death. This work is actually called Being Comforted by Death. And it, it was trying to um, put on a, a brave face or a happier face um, even though this figure here is behind me, I'm still here um, being comforted by it yes. uh, because uh, uh, you know, of the losses that I had within that particular one year. This photo also, we were talking off camera mm -hmm. and you were saying that this, this photo got you to America. That's a nice story yeah, too. Yeah, it, it's a lovely story. The, this, um, this image uh, actually was part of a, uh, a group show at uh, Switchback Gallery at what was then Monash University uh, back in 2013. I entered a competition uh, for an International Art Award and I happened to be one of the winners and, and the, um, the prize was having a show at in Chelsea in Manhattan. Uh, middle of the art world, you know, one of those magical fantasy places that the little boy from Gippsland has only heard from. Anyway, um, I was, I uh, happened to win with this image and there was another image uh, that I happened to win with and these images were going to New York and people were saying to me that you're going to go to the opening, of course. And I go, don't go to New York, it's crazy, you know. I'm, you know, this little boy from Gibson, I, I can't afford to go to New York. Long story short, I um, was displaying this work in the um, show uh, exhibition at Monash University. Uh, the, one of the directors of the time came in, had a look at the work and wanted to purchase it for the Pro Regional Gallery. And that gave me enough money to get myself over to America too. I thought this was serendipitous. I've got a bunch of money from this work. It's been displayed in uh, Manhattan. I, I need to go to the opening. Right. And it got me to America as well. Fantastic. Now, as we were saying before, the, these you're using dolls and figurines. Mm. So we're looking at an image that's, you know, about a metre or slightly more yep. than that high. But how, how, how big are the, were these yeah. figures? I've got here the actual shoe from the image. That's the actual size of the shoe that I've taken the photo of. That's the difference. So that is the scale of the shoe. Terrific, terrific. And in a sense, when you, when you were talking about um, Chelsea and Manhattan, you used the word fantasy. Yeah. And your work really allows you to kind of explore fantasies, dreams. Delusions and desires and all yeah. those things. Yes. Masculine delusions. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, again, self-portrait. I've got to have, I'm, I'm a male, so yeah. I've got masculine delusions. <laughs> um, and um, thank goodness for that. So I can go out and I explore and I can question. And by putting that work out there, I get other people questioning and exploring and then I can explain that either this is what it is, you can take it at face value or you can start to unravel and, and um, unfold what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to, to give out. You know, I, I'm not one of these people that will bash people over the head with an obvious image. I want people to come in and look at it and go, what's this about? I want people to draw their own different, um, their own baggage. Yeah. Um, and if I can pull people's baggage out of their, their work, uh, out of seeing my work, I've done my job.
Neil, we were, we were talking at uh, the other work about uh, baggage and fantasy, and, uh, and here we have uh, a self-portrait with you sitting in the Game of Thrones throne. Yeah, it, it's one of those uh, images, like Game of Thrones is one of those programs that um, it, was a, it was a constant battle between who was going to win, who was going to lose, who was going to die this episode, uh -huh. uh, everything like that. And it, it became a real um, analogy for me for, you know, who's going to win and uh, who's going to sit in that final uh, throne room. Uh, so I thought it would have been a good idea to place myself within that, um, that chair, um, which, um, which is only a, a, um, a little resin chair that um, was found in a, in a shop uh, locally. Um, and I thought, oh, I could sit one of my figures in there. So before I even had this concept in mind, the work is called The Deceit of Dolls. And my work is about deceit. You know, I'm deceiving. Um, a, the viewer in some ways because I'm trying to represent a human being but it's a doll yes so it's the deceit of dolls and we play on that again by myself holding a Barbie doll so there's myself who's a doll holding a Barbie doll yes and so there's this layer layers of deceit and there's another layer too, mm. because the doll is actually made as an Ed Harris doll. Oh, the, the, the head. The head. Uh, the head is, yeah, this, also another deceit. Uh, Ed Harris, um, I've used Ed Harris in a lot of my work as my representation, mm. uh, mainly because I've been told on a couple of occasions that I look a lot like Ed Harris. Mm. Now, I say poor head, um, <laughs> he shouldn't be uh, given that sort of... Um, bad news, but um, once I heard that, I sort of sought that out mm. uh, a little bit more and I sourced Ed Harris dolls, action figures, things like that, and I did use um, uh, his head as a representation of mine. Now, I've had people come and look at that and go, yeah, that's you. That's definitely you. It's yes. my bald head. It's my um, facial features, everything like that. So it's not an actual depiction of me, but it, it's me. And it looks like a highly realistic image of you, uh, mm. in actual fact. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. It's, um, and, but that's the deceit yes. as well. Um, so it's me, it's not me, and it's the importance of my process as well, uh, as part of that deceit, is actually sourcing, um, even though it's a doll, it's only about yay big, sourcing the jeans, the jumper, the shoes, um, to what I normally would wear. Um, I could have put any old clothes on him, but it's not me. So I, I had to find clothing that is, you know, reminiscent of what I'd wear, and that's part of the illusion, it's part of the costume, it's part of the, um, uh, of the, the trick, I guess. And, and then dressing him up and, and customising the, the whole work. And the posing's quite important in this as well. It's got to look natural. The other, other part of your work is, is kind of pulling popular culture mm. and academic painting mm. interests together into yep. the one kind of vista, yep. you know, um, which is fantastic. Mm. It kind of debunks a kind of a high art attitude and, yep. and, and deals with things that um, you know many of us have watched on TV or many of us are kind of... Yeah. Which is important, but like popular culture, it is culture. Yes. No matter how banal it is. Now, I don't go down as low as uh, reality TV. <laughs> I mean, I do have my limits. <laughs> um, but, um, but I think something in, as important as Game of Thrones, um, uh, within the zeitgeist, does resonate um, politically, socially, um, religiously um, as well. And by, by using these uh, motives, I, I guess, um, I can, like Goya 300 years ago, can represent um, um, 
elements of, of society. Uh, You've done that very clearly mm, in mm, some other works mm, with, you know, a representation of the Last Supper mm, at which, you know, Adolf Hitler's at the table. Yep. Um, as well as Churchill, as well as Stalin, yes. as well as Jesus. That's right. Um, Herman Goring was there, I think. There was a couple of zombies at the end. Um, yes, yeah, so it wasn't necessarily... Um, and I, was it, did I call it the Last Supper or the Penultimate Supper or something like that? I can't really, really remember the, the title now. Um, but yeah, I was in the place of uh, where Jesus would have been. There was a figure next to me that controversially could have been uh, Mary Magdalene. There was a female figure. Um, I think Jesus was off my side. So yes, I had this left and right. Yeah. Um, and yet another going, work was... Uh, Donald Trump, I believe. Uh, I've got a few works of Donald Trump uh, in as well. Now, so, so the politics and the real world, those things are important. Uh, they scare me. Yeah, so the definitely there's yeah. an interest in, in mm. politics and mm. contemporary affairs. And, Absolutely. And, and yeah, yeah. The, the future of the world. If there is one. Yeah. All right. Perhaps we'll leave it right yep. there. No Thanks worries. very much, Thank Neil, you very for much. a generous conversation. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant. Thank you.